Yeah, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Victor Obasui, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about another eye uh, disease called um, pterygium or pinguecula, as the case may be. The two ways are interchangeable, but I'll tell you why. Uh, pterygium itself is a degenerative condition of the conjunctival. Actually, it's a degenerative condition of the fibrovascular tissue of the conjunctival. Um, for people that live in the tropics or that grew up in the tropics or very hot climate, pterygium is very common. Almost one in four or five people will have it. Uh, and it grows at a very slow pace. So most times, um, uh, it's a benign condition. So most patients don't even know they have it unless it flares up or maybe they go for their uh, regular eye examination. And the doctor points it out that, oh, there's a little bump on your uh, eye. Are you aware of it? You tend to find pterygium in the space between the black edge here and the nasal edge of the eye. It could be in either eye or both. Um, and that is from exposure to um, UV from the sun over a long period of time. And the reason is um, a lot of us that grew up in uh, these uh, tropical areas or very, uh, very hot climate tend to go about our activities uh, without proper UV protection. Of course, most times it's out of um, ignorance. So what happens over time, this condition starts to develop. Living with pterygium, it's not a big deal because it's a benign condition. It just grows gradually and uh, usually takes a very long period for, for it to start bothering you. It's called um, the mass of flesh that develops in that uh, area that I just mentioned between the nasal uh, limbus and the inner canthus. Uh, it's called pinguecula if it doesn't encroach into the cornea. But if it encroaches into the cornea, then it is called pterygium. The anatomy and physiology of both is very similar. So most patients that have pterygium, like I said, will barely know they have it. There are aggravating factors that will bring the patient to your clinic. And um, there are four basic factors. The number one, heat. Number two, wind. Number three, dust. Then number four, smoke. So these four factors will usually aggravate the pterygium. And that's when you see the patient coming in to complain of, um, I feel like there's gravel in my eye. Uh, the eye is red. And the redness, if you look carefully, is usually localized. It's usually in that particular spot where you have the little flesh or the little bump. Unlike bacterial infection or other eye infections where the redness will be dis uh, uh, distributed all over the white area, the redness in pterygium or pinguecula is almost always limited to that particular spot where the pterygium or the pinguecula is. So, knowing the uh, what causes, we now will know what causes it, exposure to UV over a long period of time. We also now know the factors that um, exacerbate it or aggravate it, such as uh, heat, wind, dust, and smoke, like we said. What do we do then to uh, make sure that the pterygium does not get inflamed? A lot of patients come in and tell me, oh, the, it's genetic. My father had it, my mother had it, and my uh, siblings or uncles had it, so that's why I have it. Truth be told, it is not genetic. Pterygium is not genetic. It is environmentally induced because um, most times your parents uh, or your family members probably all grew up in the same place. And in that same environment, everybody did the same thing. Everybody went about doing their business without proper UV protection um, glasses. So you're exposed to the same UV from the sun then chances are high that virtually everyone in the, in, in the family or around there will get it. So it is not genetic, and it's not an infection. It's not a bacterial. The fact it's red does not make it a bacterial infection. It's not a viral infection. So you don't need to use an antibiotic or antiviral for it. 
So then, now that we know this is what region or pinguicula is, uh, these are the factors that aggravate it. Then the next question is, um, how do you um, prevent yourself from aggravating it? The very first thing that we do is heat. Uh, try to minimize the time you spend in very hot places. That will help. Then for some people that go surfing, and that's why it's called um, surfer's eye. If you go surfing in water, most times the sun will hit into the water and it will reflect into your eyes. So a lot of times if you're going to be in water, especially in um, those areas where you have um, the sun is really very bright, make sure you have proper UV protection. So heat, we've said. Then wind. If you're driving, do not leave your windows open when you drive. The wind will come in and it will hit the eye and it will aggravate the pterygium before you know it. Then dust. If you're in a dusty environment, it will aggravate the pterygium. So a lot of times, um, wrap around glasses with UV protection will do uh, yourself a lot of um, help. Then smoke. Uh, people that live in, maybe people around you smoke, or if you cook, if you if you're a chef and you cook for a living, uh, using maybe firewood where there's a lot of smoke, or uh, if you if if you work in a kitchen, of course the terrigen will flare up frequently. So again, get wrap around um, sun uh, glasses with UV protection will help. But even if you're indoors. With uh, the wrap around sunglasses with UV protection is for outdoor use, but when you're indoors, also wrap around glasses will also help a lot. Then, if you're in the car or at home, sometimes what happens in the summer when is when the weather is very hot, everybody wants AC or they turn the fan on. Uh, when the weather is cold, we all want the heat. We turn the heater on. You do not want the heater, the fan, to be blowing directly into your face. It will aggravate it. This is the same if you're driving, uh, let the, uh, instead of pointing the, vent, the vents toward your face, direct them outwards. Or, alternatively, uh, if you're at home and you need the fan on, so heater or um, AC, whatever it is, do not let the fan blow the air directly into your face. It's always better to direct it away from your face. That way you don't aggravate the uh, pterygium. So these are basic things that we can do. But sometimes, no matter what the precaution that you take, the pterygium will still flare up. Once the pterygium flares up, what do you do? Uh, when I say pterygium flares up, I'm talking about uh, now the patient is complaining. Because usually the pterygium will be there. It doesn't bother you if you don't bother it. But when I say flares up, that means the patient is already complaining of um, red eye or um, I feel like there's gravel in the eye or the eye is um, watery suddenly. So once it flares up, there are a few things that you can do. The very first line of action that I usually recommend to patients is lubrication. Lubricate, lubricate, lubricate. Lubrication here, we're talking about using um, artificial teardrops. Artificial teardrop is non-medicinal, so usually it doesn't have any side effect. It's just a, it's just viscous water, except um, if you have a preservative that you you are allergic to, then you want to uh, get away with get out of the non uh, out of the preserved um, artificial tears and use a non-preserved artificial tears. So just keep lubricating the eyes. The thing is, when you have pterygium, uh, the Patients complain of uh, that gravel feeling because actually that particular area, the mass of flesh, becomes raised, is inflamed. So when you now blink, the lead starts to rub against it. So some patients say, uh, they come in and uh, tell you that, oh, I've been, I feel like there's gravel, I've been trying to wash it off, but um, it doesn't seem to be, uh, the uh, gravel doesn't seem to be coming out. So, of course, even if you wash with water from today till uh, 10 years, it is not going to come up because it's not, it's not a foreign body. It is a part of your eyes, part of your conjunctiva. That's what it is. But it's just elevated. So, 
you cannot wash it off. The only way to actually take it out completely is to surgically excise it, which is done not at home by you, but by uh, an ophthalmologist or an eye specialist. They can actually scrape it. So the first line of action is lubrication. If lubrication doesn't work, then the next thing is your eye doctor usually prescribe a very mild steroid. The mild steroid will do two things, vasoconstriction, which means take off the redness, and also reduce the inflammation. With the um, uh, mild steroid, it's used usually within uh, two to three days maximum, the patient will have um, complete relief. So the redness will be gone, the swelling will be down. So that's where the uh, steroid comes in handy. But again, with the steroid, steroids have a um, tendency to cause uh, side effects like um, cataract or glaucoma if you use for a very long time. Uh, so that's why it is not good to self-medicate. It's better for you to let the specialist handle that part. Because while they uh, put you on this medication for the short period, they can also monitor for side effects of um, uh, side effects like cataract or glaucoma by checking your uh, uh, intraocular pressure, which is pressure on the eye for uh, glaucoma. Then, the next other option, like I said, if lubrication doesn't work and um, the mild steroid still doesn't do it, then we're looking at the uh, option of uh, excision, which is to scrape the pterygium. Scraping the pterygium will be done for one of two reasons. Number one could be maybe the patient, uh, they complain cosmetically, they don't want it there because um, it, it will flare up uh, intermittently. Anytime you have any of those four aggravating factors, it can easily flare up. So you don't have, really have control over when it flares up or not. So cosmetically, some patients might say, you know what, I don't want to do it. I just want it um, scraped off. That's one reason. Then the second reason, which is when it is really important to take it out, if it's the pterygium starts to encroach not just into the cornea, but into the pupil, that is when it is compulsory to take it out. Because you don't want it to scar and leave um, scarred tissues. So this is when it's compulsory to take out the pterygium. So those are the only times where it's really, uh, when it becomes necessary, and these are uh, the way to deal with it. Uh, lubrication... Uh, mild um, steroid or surgically taking it out. A um, few years back, most surgeons used to frown at the, uh, at the option of cosmetically having to uh, take out the pterygium. And that was because um, uh, it will usually grow back in most almost 40 to 50% of cases. And then it will grow faster, which means you have to keep going back to scrape it. But with technology these days, there's the option of um, graft surgery, which means the surgeon can actually scrape the pterygium off and take um, tissue from um, uh, another part of the uh, conjunctiva and um, glue it on. So this way, it doesn't grow back. And also, the medication called uh, mitomycin C, uh, eye drops, also helps to ensure that... Um, the pterygium does not grow back. So this is why these days uh, you have the option to take it out if you want to, even if it's not uh, encroaching into the pupil. So but the best thing to do, they say prevention is better than cure. Uh, minimize your contact with those four um, aggravating factors, heat, wind, dust, and smoke. Then most importantly, whenever you're outdoors, make sure you have proper UV protection uh, sunglasses. This applies to both the young and the old. So I just thought I'd share this with you guys because I had um, a situation not too long ago where uh, somebody had uh, sent me an inbox message that uh, he had this bacterial infection. Every time the thing comes back, uh, he pulls the drop, then it will... Uh, it's, it's, uh, it clears for a little while, then it comes back. So I said, uh, send me um, an up-close picture of the eye when it happens. So he sent me the picture, and when I look at the picture, I realized uh, this wasn't a bacterial infection. It was a typical case of um, pterygium, which is why it is not good to self-medicate, you know. And um, 
I was able to guide the patient through. So I just thought I'll share this with you guys. It's not every red eye that's a bacterial infection or that needs an antibiotic. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to put, um, I'm sure most of you would have seen this uh, pterygium or pigocular that I'm talking about, but I'm going to put some pictures along on this video so that way you know. So keep sharing the video. You don't know who's going to benefit from, uh, benefit from it. If you think you learned one or two tips from this, please uh, hit the like button and um, give it a thumb up. Share the video. Comments are highly welcome. If you have any topic that you want me to talk about regarding the eyes, leave, me, leave, it, leave it in the comment section and I'll get to it. Thank you so much. Again, my name is Victor Obasi. Have a lovely day.